Okay, good morning again. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me, I'm Dr. Wes Youngberg. I'm the director here at the SDA Wellness Center. And uh, we're glad that you've chosen to um, be part of this educational program that really focuses on optimizing our emotional and neurologic wellness. There are many reasons uh, uh, why we could benefit from a program such as this. I know over a year ago when I first went through a program like this, I found it extremely beneficial to me and, and optimizing our, uh, my, my own emotional and neurological health. I, I had a grandfather who uh, developed Alzheimer's disease in his 70s. And, uh, and I, I'm aware of certain familial traits, some certain inherited traits, uh, from a genetic standpoint that uh, suggests to me that I'm prone to neurologic conditions. I know my mother uh, suffered from depression in her late 30s and early 40s. And uh, at age 41, she passed away from a brain tumor. And, and uh, what I learned from that as I've studied this topic is that there is many factors that can affect how we feel. Sometimes we think that the only thing related to how we feel is our genetic predisposition and things that happened to us when we were younger, developmentally. And so we, we spend most of our time trying to figure out what happened to us years ago that caused us to feel the way we feel. When in reality, while those are important issues, they're not the most important issues, the influence, how we feel and uh, whether or not we feel anxious, whether or not we feel depressed. And so the subtitle the, of, of this seminar series that we're beginning today is The Way Out from Depression, Anxiety, Headaches, Fatigue, Poor Memory, Alzheimer's Risk, and Neurologic Conditions. So it's very broad, you see. There's, uh, just in the news recently, there was a report that Alzheimer's is twice as prevalent today than it was just a few years ago. What's going on? What's going on with our neurologic health? It seems that our neurologic and emotional health is, is under siege. That there's so many things bombarding us from so many directions that more and more people are succumbing to the symptoms or the actual conditions where the neurologic uh, system is breaking down. So, so this is a very appropriate type of educational seminar where we can prevent problems in the future. We can begin to better understand what's going on with not just our physical health as we normally think of physical health, but also our emotional health. And by the way, emotional health is just as physical as knee pain. Most of us don't think of it that way. Oh, knee pain, yeah, that's physical. Oh, yeah, my knee, you know, that's a physical thing. But what's going on in our brain? How we think and how we feel is just as physical because it's based on the same physical, physiologic, chemical principles that pain in the knee or pain somewhere else in the body or other type of symptoms or problems occur. So many times, um, people don't seek help for the way they feel because somehow they believe that it's associated with a character flaw. But really, it's no more associated with a character flaw than any other medical condition. It's, it's perceptions. We, we have misunderstood these conditions up until recently. Uh, so uh, this is... Uh, this is a very exciting seminar series for me because I've benefited so much from it and I hope that you uh, as individuals and your families will also benefit from this information that you can take home and implement for yourselves and for others. So today we're going we're gonna to introduce this topic and we're, we're really going to take an inside look at what is affecting our brain. When we have a, a muscular problem, we then ask the problem, well, what, what is it that's causing this muscular problem? 
when something's going on in our brain, we, f we forget to ask that question. And, and we skip to, you know, taking a pill that makes us feel better without really asking the question, well, what's causing this problem or this symptom? And uh, so part of the answer to this is actually understanding the neural anatomy, the, 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 the way the brain uh, develops and was created. So here we have an organ uh, that um, is very mysterious in many ways. It's a um, very complex organ. But the point I want to make here is that it is an organ, much like the other organ systems. And it can be influenced by many factors. When we have a liver problem, then we try to figure out, well, what's causing the liver problem, and try to fix that. Treat it. Yes? But does the brain constantly deteriorate, or can we do something about it? We can definitely do a lot about our brain. Mm -hmm. And that's we're going to be learning the strategies oh. to, to address that. I think I'm past that point. I don't know. <laughs> so the, the point here is that the brain is an organ system that is under attack environmentally, lifestyle choices, how, how we think about certain issues, affects how the brain works. Many different factors come together to determine the way the brain works, just like any other organ system. So our efforts over the next many weeks is to understand that and then continue to put more and more strategies together in order to help us really accomplish the goal, which is to feel better, uh, to uh, be able to optimize our performance and our uh, ability to enjoy activities throughout the day, uh, but also to greatly limit our risk for developing problems, neurologic problems in the future, uh, to improve our memory as we age, rather than having worsening memory as we age. All these factors are related to many factors that we will be ad uh, addressing. Here is, a, here is a spec scan. This is a special medical imaging of the brain that actually looks at the metabolism of the brain. How much blood flow and oxygen is being used by this, the neurons, the cells of the brain. And as you can see here, this, the brain is very smooth. And this is actually looking at the metabolic flow of blood and oxygen through the brain. Very smooth. No, no deep crevices or, or holes in this brain. Later on, in a, in a few weeks, we're going to be showing you pictures of brains that are under attack, okay, that are under attack by different factors. And they're going to look like, like huge caverns and holes are in this brain because those areas of the brain are not working. They're not working at that present time. So this, this is a picture of a healthy brain, the type of brain that we all want to have. If we have, if we have a knee injury, we want to figure out what we need to do to, to take care of that knee and to restore it through physical therapy and, and taking the right supplements, taking the right medication, getting on the right diet, the right exercises, so that knee comes back and is restored to optimal health. The same thing is true of our brain. Well, the brain actually has over 10 billion neurons. Neurons are the individual cells that are, make up uh, the brain. And so it's, it's a tremendous number of cells in the brain. In fact, the, the bridges or the interconnections in the brain constitute over 10 trillion. And in fact, the the human brain is the most complex system known in the universe. NASA or the, the Department of Defense have nothing that is more complex in, in, in its engineering and function 
than the human brain.